Um, okay, we're just gonna get started so that we're not here all night. Um, so I first wanted to just talk about the habits group that we wanted to, to do. So we're starting at the 16th, you guys, and you guys are welcome to utilize it however you want. So, but the prizes, so I will probably add, let some of my older people go into the group, people that just maybe have fallen off that need to get started again. I'll add them to the group, but I also am gonna let them know if they are not on a current Shakeology or performance line order, or they got a new pack, then they can't qualify for the prizes, but they can totally, totally be in the group. So totally fine. Um, so yeah, just let people know that. And I personally, I've just been writing down a few things of things I want to talk about for the habits group because I just, I would love to get, and if you guys want to help, let us know. I can assign you a certain day. Um, I would love to have all three weeks scheduled out before it starts <laughs> so that we don't have to stress about anything. We don't have to stress about making sure that stuff is posted, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we're going to do it on the app. Um, I am, I want every single Saturday to, for the post to be like a reflect on your week. What did you do good at? What, what can you work on? Reflect on your goals. Okay. Um, I want to talk about like rise. So it's going to be getting up in the morning, getting your workout done early or people, you know, obviously not every single person need, can get it done early, but if you can, that's super ideal. Okay. So rise and energize, like get out of bed, energize, do some personal development and then do your workout. And we can have book recommendations. We can go to YouTube and share lots of, lots of awesome, um, videos, stuff like that. So we can pick a day and which I think I'll literally write down all 21 days and we can assign who does what. Okay. Um, I want them to share their goals with five people because when you share your goals with people, it really helps. So that can be one day. Um, trying to figure out like who are those negative toxic people to, if obviously if it's family, you can't just like let them go out of your life, but know how to deal with them. Okay. Um, or if it's people that you can cut out of your life to do it because so many times we think that just because we've known people for so long that they should always be in our life. And that's not the case. Like if they're not benefiting your life, they don't need to be in your life. Sorry. Um, so the Saturday progress check-in, we're going to do a zoom workout and I will host the one starting at 6 AM. If there's people that need a different time, like East coast people are just different time with people work. They can totally do an, another one at a different time. Okay. And we can talk about that. Um, and then we'll do a $50. We can all just chip in a couple. Honestly, if there's this many people from chipping in, if we even did like five bucks each, we'll do a $50 gift card. And, um, for somebody that literally sh just killed the, killed it in the three weeks. So checked in with their workouts and their shake each day. Okay. And we can totally keep track of that. We can do a weekly leaderboard. Um, but I think just helping people be accountable to others. And I, I personally know that when I get up and get my workout in and everything in the morning, my whole entire day goes a million times better. So I'm sure I'm not the only one that thinks that. So do you guys have any other ideas or things that you can either unmute yourself or type it things that we should super focus on? Obviously personal development is going to be huge, but just other things to help people like build solid habits. Um, we can throw like to be mindset stuff in there, like focusing on making sure they drink their water first, focusing on eating plenty of veggies, stuff like that. Okay. So I'll make a, I can even make a Google doc. I'll do that. Make a Google doc. I'll share it. And you guys can pick a day to get it all scheduled out. We'll have people do one day. And then after everybody got at least one day, then we can fill in the holes with people that want to do more, more than one and just get it scheduled so that we are ready to go. Um, talk about we can do like pin a post that has the different links for the zoom different times stuff like that um but yeah i'll do that vibe to thrive do i even i don't even know what that is i'll have to look at our page kylie i don't even know what the rachel hollis five to thrive is is it like a habit thing like five i'll have to look because i'm not sure um but I just think that, yeah, I'll write that down and I'll look that up. Cause then if it's five different things, 
five different people can talk about it and talk and post different things about it. Um, yes, I can't. I'm like, I was hoping someone would know them because I forgot them. But it's like, wake up, write down like five things you're grateful for. Um, okay. Like, I don't know, basically things we already do. I'll get the exact details, but make sure you're drinking your water. She says like half your body weight in ounces, kind of like we already do. Do at least 30 minutes of physical activity. And then there's a wake up an hour earlier than you usually do, I think. So there's four. I don't know. I'll think of the rest because I feel like a lot of people would know her and we could find like a good post on it. That can be one of my days. Yeah, no, that's perfect. <laughs> no, that's good. And you guys, you can, you can do a post or if you're confident enough and you want to do a short video and upload a YouTube video of you talking about it, do it. I think people like to see your faces, especially if you're adding people to it. They like to see you. Um, there was something else. I think gratitude. We could, we could do like, it could be like our focus. Like we could put a, like a image of the, those five things and that can be it's too bad in the app you can't pin more than one thing i know um but we could upload yeah. like a picture and the files that they can like the habit tracker type of thing oh you know what? i never even used the files in the challenge tracker app i forgot that that was even a thing yeah so, so we can put a put a, do a little graphic and do where that could be like how we choose the 50 dollar winner people that legit do their tracker and track their stuff and actually do this stuff every day so it's not just like you're shaking your workout. It's also getting up early and doing your gratitude and stuff like that. Yeah. You can do the, when Mel Robbins talked about in her five second rule, talking about counting backwards and how that like totally helped her learn how to get out of bed in the morning. Okay. It's just counting backwards. Yeah. We'll do a post about that. That's yeah. So that's what I'll make a Google sheet. And then I'll send it to everybody in here. Um, and then we can just pick a day and then you write next to it, talk about your topic. Okay. So we can do the pin post and then we can also do the different things in the different, in the files and we'll, we can upload meal plans, stuff like that. So they have access to those things. Um, the mompreneur thing, I'll upload her meal plans cause they're super simple and they're easy. So something like that would be nice for, you know, people don't know what to even eat. So that would be helpful for them. So yeah, so awesome. I'm excited. I think it'll be good. Something different to talk about for a minute. And then obviously after this, I'm going to just roll my people back into my MM100 current group anyway. So they can do any program they want to do. It's not a specific program. Honestly, whatever they're going to get up and do the workout of, that's, that's what they should do. Whatever program they like, that's what they should pick that they're going to actually do. Because <laughs> so many people try to just do the program that everyone else is doing and they hate it. You know what I mean? So yeah. Any other ideas? If not, we can roll over to Marty's stuff. Um, I, so for today we had a call with Bonnie Engel and she was talking about how she like tries to help her people. I just wanted to say this real quick. Cause I loved it how she tries to help her newer coaches, coaches specifically kind of get past like what people think. And she goes, I tell, I like tell them who are the top five people that you would tell them how much you love them. If you, if you found out you're going to die tomorrow, like you're going to die. Like who are those top five people that you would like tell that you love, you know? And then she goes, now who are the top five people that you think about when you post something vulnerable or that you think are judging you on your social media every time. Like if those are not the same five people, then you should not care what those five people think. Cause I was like, yeah, like, especially I don't really care anymore. But when I started, I used to think what the people that I honestly didn't even care about thought of me, you know? So if those five people don't match, reevaluate why you even care what that person thinks, because it does not matter. It doesn't matter. So for people that are new and nervous about posting, like think about that when you post, like I'm, if they're not the most important people in your life and, and they would actually care about what you're saying, then it does not matter. So I liked that when she said that. It's so true. Um, well, yeah. Uh, Kylie just said there was one about giving up on healthy food and we can like do a post on 
like going through your pantry and getting rid of all the crap food or stuff like that. That would be a good one too. Yes. Five to thrive sounds perfect for it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That'll be good. Okay. We'll get all that set up and I'm excited for it. So please invite to it. Please tell your coaches to invite to it and it'll be, it'll be awesome. So, okay. All right. So I'm just going to turn the time over to Marty. Uh, I know that she's been doing a training with Jody Moore and she cause we went to lunch the other day and she was just talking all about it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. And then it was sold out. <laughs> so she kind of just has some things she wants to talk about, obviously ask questions if you have questions, but I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Okay, Marty. And if you guys don't know Marty, she's one of my coaches, one of my diamonds. Okay. You should know her. <laughs> okay. So I guess the people that I've known for a while, they know I'm obsessed with Jody Moore. <laughs> Like I've been listening to her podcast. It was called Better Than Happy. If you're not listening to it, I highly recommend start listening to it because it's so good. Um, Micah has um, recommended listening to Brooke Castillo and Brooke Castillo is Jody Moore's coach. So they do like very, very similar things. Um, I have lots of notes because there's so much I want to tell you guys. So for seriously like a year, I've been wanting to join her group. And then finally last month was my birthday. And I'm like, I'm just going to do this for my birthday just to see what it's all about. And I so wish I would have started her group sooner. So each month she picks like a topic and she focuses on that. So this month it's stop buffering. So like, um, finding what you use as a buffer to like hide your emotions. Last month it was on confidence. She teaches you like a little class about it. There's exercises that go along with it. And then like two to three times a week, there's coach calls. She does some of them. She has some coaches that do some of them, but it's so interesting to like hear her coach people through their problems. And if you haven't heard the book, um, oh my gosh, what's it called? Cozy, you know what book I'm talking about. The Mel Robbins book, Take Control of Your Life. Um, she coaches like six people through like these fears that they have. And it's so interesting because honestly, like we all have the same issues. It's just sometimes it's in certain situations. Sometimes they're just worse off. So she teaches you this model um, and you can plug literally any problem in to this model and just dissect everything else. So that's what I'm hoping I can teach you guys tonight because it's so simple, but so dang powerful. So is everybody in the making goals happen, whatever that group is, is everyone in that group that's on here? Okay. I'm going to send a picture to that group. And this is the model and I'll like break it down for you. So the first part of the model is the circumstance and the circumstance is always just neutral. Um, she said the easiest way to figure out if it's a cir circumstance versus our thoughts is a circumstance is facts. Like you don't have any kind of control over it and it has no opinion and everybody would be able to agree on it. So that's a circumstance. So like, for example, circumstance, weather, what the weather is doing outside or traffic, or she showed a picture of a husband laying on a couch and the room was like a complete disaster. Um, she said the number on the scale, which I totally thought of like the 2B mindset, how Alana teaches, like it's just a number. It doesn't mean anything. You can totally use it as a tool to help you lose weight. That number on the scale is just a circumstance. It doesn't mean anything. It has no opinion. Everybody can agree to it. The next part of the um, model is thoughts. And we give the circumstances, all of the control by the thoughts that we create. So 
um, we always have circumstances around us, but we give them meaning by the thoughts. The thoughts are opinionated and it's our brain way of protecting us. So for example, going back to the weather, she said, say the weather's like seven degrees outside. That's the circumstance. And our thought is, oh, it's really cold outside. And that creates a feeling of, I don't want to go outside. I don't want to do anything. And that creates an action of staying inside and doing nothing. And that creates a result of, I didn't do anything today. I feel like crap. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, is that part making sense at all? If you have any questions, please ask because I want this to like make sense because it's so, it really is so simple, but so powerful. Um, so I'll go through a couple more examples of it. Um, so say for example, <laughs> your husband laying on the couch and he's asleep and you come home and the house is a complete disaster. That's a circumstance. Um, and our thought is like, why can he not help out more? Why does he not do anything? Does he not care about me at all? And um, that leads to a feeling of, oh, he doesn't love me, you know, which leads to an action of, I don't really want to talk to him right now, which leads to the result of my husband is annoyed by me and he doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> does that make sense? <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe I should use that one a little more in my brain when I'm annoyed with my husband. <laughs> um, okay, so take the weight for your weight, for example. You step on a scale, you see a number, that's your circumstance. The thought is, I can't lose weight. Makes you feel like you can't do anything, that you're never going to get to the weight that you want to, which leads to an action of not exercising not eating the way you're supposed to and the result you're still stuck and you might even put on more weight so feelings are created by our thoughts not our circumstances yes diana it's totally a mindset and what you focus on feelings is what drives us um to our feelings we want to feel good so we're trying to constantly drive to have a good feeling and that's where our thoughts are coming from so the circumstances trigger their thoughts and the thoughts trigger the feelings. So she says the solution to this is understanding your feelings and your emotions and what drives our behaviors. So you kind of really just have to pay attention to the thoughts that you're thinking and the way it um, makes your body feel. And Mel Robbins talks about this a lot in that book too. She's always asking the people like, okay, when, when this was happening, like what did your body do? And she said in it that if we can be aware of what our body's doing before it like sends the signal to our brain, a lot of times we can like control our reaction to it. But when we don't know what our body's doing, it sends the signal to our brain. And then that's when we've lost like all control of our behavior. Sometimes you cry, sometimes you scream, whatever it is. Um, so understanding your feelings and your emotions and how many times have we heard that like when we send messages out to people, oh have a good positive vibe behind your message because they can sense it. Like legit you guys, they can sense it. People can sense your emotions. Like how many times have you walked into a room and the tension is like so high and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Or like just the other day, I text one of my friends and she was like, oh my gosh, I was just going to text you. Like I have been way more aware of talking to people or sending them texts and they're like, I was just going to text you. Or I go to say something to my husband. And he was like, oh, I was just going to say the same thing. Like we're all connected. Yes, it's yeah. So people can sense your emotions. So it's extremely important when you're sending out those messages to make sure you're having like good thoughts so you feel good so that emotion is going out with your messages um have empowering feelings that's what's going to give you the most effective action 
And those feelings don't always feel good, like growing a business, like it is uncomfortable growing a business. But having those empower feelings behind of the why of what you're wanting to do, that's what's going to drive you forward in the business, drive you forward in the actions that you want to take. Um, a lot of times we don't want to feel negative emotion and that's where like buffering comes in and overeating and whatever scrolling on social media or whatever it is that you're not wanting to feel and you do instead. She said, um, negative feelings, we're supposed to feel these. So we just need to be aware of them when we are feeling them. Our brains like to create danger that's not real and it keeps us stuck. So I know for me, there's been so many times like I've just told myself like, oh, I'm never, no one's going to want to join me. Like I can't run this business. I can't grow a business. And it's just my brain telling me that. And I say stuck to protect myself. Like, oh, see, you're not, you're not doing anything. So you can't really grow a business. So it's okay to feel the negative emotion. Don't try to push that negative emotion aside, but just be aware of it. And then when you feel it, like be aware of the thought that's creating that negative feeling. And then she talks about feelings, how it's just a vibration in your body and it's just chemicals being released through your body. Some are empowering and some just make us feel like crap and just keep us stuck. So the next part of that, model is the actions and our actions are 100% always based off of our feelings. Um, our actions are our behavior, our tone, and the way we show up for ourselves. And willpower is an action, but she said, which this was really interesting to me, she said willpower is only available for a limited time. Um, and what willpower is, is just you trying to override your negative feeling to feel something different. So she used, you know, good nutrition for an example. Like you can tell yourself, I'm not going to eat those treats and have willpower for like a couple days about it. But how do you feel when you're like trying to have willpower to eat good? Like, do you feel good or do you feel like crap? Because I always feel like crap when I rely on the willpower to try and get me through. So willpower will get you so far. And if you're using the willpower, notice what your thoughts are doing and notice the way you are feeling and learning how to switch that feeling is what's going to drive you forward, not willpower. Um, and then our results in life are driven by our actions and your results will always, always be proof of the original thought that you had. So if you look on that picture, that I sent you, um, it says the circumstances trigger our thoughts, which create our feelings, which create our actions, which create the results, and then the arrow goes back up to the thought. Your result is always, always going to be the result of your thought. And you have to remember that you are responsible for your own results, and you are not responsible for anybody else's results. Um, so when I joined the group, I started in August and in July, like I had a good month in July, like I was at success club eight and I got Kobe to success club six. That's the first time ever I've got both of our accounts to success club. Like I killed July. I was so proud of myself and August 1st hit and I instantly was like, you're not going to have another month like that. Um, yeah, Cozy, do you want to send her that picture? <laughs> um, anyway, so I instantly was like, yeah, you're not going to have any results like that again. You can't repeat a month like that. Like you might as well just lower all your goals because it's never going to happen again. And I was so annoyed with myself and it was like a war in my head of why can't I just be consistent? Like, why can't I you know, just be proud of what I did and just do it again this next month. But it was just back and forth. And for the first like week and a half of August, I literally didn't do anything because I was so annoyed with myself that I was just having these awful thoughts. 
So in her group, she offers one-on-one coaching. And so I signed up for a one-on-one coach. And seriously, guys, it was like the most amazing thing ever. (laughs) So she broke my issue down with me. And my circumstance was July. I had, how many people did I sign up? Seven, seven people. And in August, I was at zero. And my thought was, why can't I be consistent? Why can't I do this? Why can't I just grow my business? And it made me feel annoyed. And it led to my action of not doing anything. And it led to the result of no one signing up. Which how can you make money? How can you build a business when you're not doing anything and no one's signing up? And so she was like, okay, we need to come up with a different thought. So what thought would you do? And I was like, I'm consistent, but I don't believe it because I'm not consistent. And she was like, okay, then you need to figure out a different thought. And I was like, okay, well, I show up for myself every day and I show up for the people that I want to help. And she was like, okay, so start telling yourself every single day, I'm consistent. I show up for myself and I show up for other people. She was like, when you say that to yourself, how does it make you feel? I was like, it makes me feel happy. She's like, okay, then that's going to be a good response for your body to start doing stuff. So I started telling myself that, which made me feel happy, which made me have a better attitude and better feelings towards sending those invites out. And within like, I don't know, two weeks, I hit success club. So there was my result. Changing my thought led to better actions, which changed my result which was a proof of the thought that I was having. So she teaches you how to change your result. And the way to do it is be a curious observer of yourself. So um, completely understanding like how you're feeling. And when you feel yourself being negative, stop and like be aware of the things that you're thinking and she's like you can't do it when with judgment toward yourself like there's no shaming there's no guilting just be aware of everything that you're feeling and everything that you're thinking and when you feel this way how does it make you behave does it make you behave in a way that is going to progress you or is it going to make you feel a way that's going to keep you stuck and then think to yourself how is my current thinking impacting the situation that I'm in Um, and she said to not rush to change the thought the longer that you can observe the way you're feeling and observe the way you're thinking um, the easier it is to change the thought permanently so many people like think like oh I don't want to feel this way so I have to hurry and change my thought And it's just like a vicious cycle over and over instead of just accepting the fact that you feel like crap for a second and it's the way that you're thinking, like just allow your body to feel it and to think it and then choose the thought that's going to make you feel better. And the more you can allow yourself to feel that way, the easier it is to change it and then it becomes a permanent thought quicker. Does that make sense to everybody? So how do you find a new thought? Um, She said you have to find a thought that you already believe a little bit. There has to be some kind of truth in it a tiny bit. So for example, like my, I showed up for myself and I show up for people that I'm helping. There was truth in that. The consistent part wasn't true, but the other part was. And so you have to find a thought that has a little bit of truth in it. And find a thought that makes you feel the way you want to feel. If you're giving yourself a thought that you don't believe, like your body doesn't like agree with it, then that thought's not going to work. So you have to find a thought that makes you feel happy and empowers you. Um, A thought that gives you the action that leads to a different change of result. And once you find that thought, write it down. Like how many times have we heard 
people saying like, oh, you know, I had like all these different thoughts on my mirror, on my fridge, on my phone. And I read them all the time, every single day. Like if you write it down and you read it every single day, you'll start to see the evidence that that thought is true. And this reminded me of in the Rise Planner, the book of proof. Like if you're writing things down in the book of proof, it's easy to go back and read those things like, oh, this is what I was thinking. This is what I was feeling. And look at the result that happened with that. It's easier to remind yourself that like, yes, I can do this. So if you guys don't have the rice planner, I highly suggest getting the rice planner because it is a game changer with your business. <laughs> um, and then you have to practice believing it. And the way you practice believing it, um, yes, for real, the book of proof, like it's a game changer. Um, the way you redirect it is, I mean, you use the example of like moving because we moved, I don't know, like eight months ago. And it's funny because like subconsciously there was, I don't even know where I was going. I think I was going to Kobe's parents' house because they kind of lived by our old house. And just like subconsciously, I got off on the exit to go to my house. And she said that like subconsciously, our brains will continue to go back to that original bad thought. And we have to catch it consciously and redirect our thought to the new thought. So like with moving subconsciously, I got off on that exit and I was headed to my old house. And then I was like, wait, I don't live there anymore. So I have to go this way. So when you're thinking those bad thoughts, you have to consciously be aware of it and you have to redirect it back to the new thought. And eventually that new thought becomes the permanent thought. Does that make sense at all? Hopefully. No, I, no, I love that. I think that sometimes like when I was little, my parents would always say like, you can't always control bad thoughts that come into your mind, but you can always control how fast they leave. And it's just being super aware of when you do have bad thoughts about yourself or whatever the circumstance, right. you can always control how fast it leaves and how fast you change. But I also think it's so important for like to, as adults to sit and think of why you're feeling a certain way. You know, I mean, I just think sometimes we try so hard to just like, we're feeling a certain way to just tell ourselves, don't feel that way. Don't feel that way. So we're trying to cover it up 24 seven instead of actually trying to figure out why you feel that way and how you can, right. it, instead of just trying to cover it up and then it's going to resurface every time. Exactly. So. Exactly. So she teaches you like how to fill your emotions. And she said, the first step is to name it. Like, don't give it a name, but like name it. Like, what are you feeling? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling irritable? And it's only one word. And if you, what you name it is more than one word, then it's not an emotion, it's a thought. The second thing is to find it in your body. Um, and she said that like a lot of times um, we feel the emotions in our core. So like this reminded me, like I used to have anxiety attacks really, really bad. And whenever I'd get like an anxiety attack, it was always in my chest. Like, I had shortness of breath. I felt like someone was like sitting on me. I couldn't breathe. And um, so find it in your body and then like describe it to yourself. Like, how does it feel? Um, and then the third thing is to relax into it, which I also remember the therapist that I was going to telling me this when I was having like an anxiety attack to not fight it, but to like relax into it. And I was like, what the crap like how are you supposed to relax into it when you feel like you're going to die and he like told me if like you feel like your heart's going to beat out of your chest like help it to beat faster you know just like let your body completely relax into it and a lot of times that freaks us out because we think if we do that then it's going to make the emotion worse and it really does like the complete opposite like literally go from like your head to your toes like making your muscles relax and you'll feel relaxed. Um, and then the next part is um, picture it, like picture in your mind, like what your body is doing, like what's going on with it. 
And then the next part is remind yourself that it's just sentences in your brain, the thoughts that are creating you to feel this way. Anxiety, for example, is a second emotion. It's not like the first emotion that we feel. It's a second emotion that we feel. And then allow it to just happen until it subsides. And the more you can relax and be aware of it, the quicker it will subside. So I think, I think that's ahead. super because I mean, I have nieces and nephews, most, a lot of you guys are moms and like letting your kids when they're having a freak out moment, like I'll be with like Micah and she will let like Brig freak out for five minutes and then he's over it. So I'm like, that's how we should, act. we should do sometimes feel the moment, feel how you're feeling and then figure out how to fix it. But it's the same right. as your kids. <laughs> Right. Well, and a lot of times, like when, like if they are freaking out or if our kids are crying or whatever, which this is something I've had to work really hard on, like I would always tell like my kids, stop crying, you're fine. But that's like, they don't know how to um, like release their emotion any other way. And if we tell them to like, stop feeling that, then we're just teaching them to stop feeling their emotions. And then they will release it some other way you know, down the road. And so it's super important to like teach your kids and yourself that it is okay to feel these emotions. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so going back to like those other examples that I gave, she gave examples of the same circumstance with changing your result by changing your thought. So she said the weather, it's seven degrees outside, it's cold, but if you choose to say, um, it's beautiful, then it will make you feel grateful. And that leads to an action of like having energy, which leads to a result of like actually doing something productive in your day. Um, she gave another example of traffic. If you're stuck in traffic and you're late to a meeting, you usually get road rage. <laughs> and you have all these thoughts of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. I'm going to be late. People are going to be mad. But if you change your thought of, um, everything will work out the way it's supposed to. That will give you the feeling of calmness, which leads to an action of feeling confident energy and a better tone, which leads to a result of you don't care if people are annoyed with you. Um, and then the husband, for example, laying on the couch with a dirty room. If your thought is his behavior isn't about me, it's about him, um, it gives you the feeling of just like, being neutral and it leads to the action of you actually having a conversation with him and telling him how you feel which leads to a thought of him being like okay how can i help them out more um i think that's kind of all of it um but she talks about again just to remember to find a thought that resonates with you. Like Ashley McClellan, I feel like is like the queen of affirmations. <laughs> She's so good at coming up with like powerful affirmations. And I've tried to use some of the ones that she does and it does nothing for me, like absolutely nothing. So you have to find the things that resonate with you. Um, what, what did I write here? Oh, we're really, really good at believing old thoughts that aren't true about ourselves. So get really good at redirecting your thoughts to the thought that's good for you. And you're going to get really, really good at coming or believing that new thought too. And she said, the more you use this model, the more it will change your life. Like you literally can put any issue into this model and break it down to where you're like, okay, how am I feeling? What am I thinking? And how is this going to lead to the result that I want? So I also um, have noticed like in the buffering group part, like I buffer with food and I did not realize I was like such an emotional eater. Like I've been stuck at the same weight for like over a month probably. And when I had this one-on-one -on -one call, she pointed that out to me. She was like, you're buffering with food, which is also making you feel super annoyed. 
and it's keeping you stuck where you are. And another buffer that I've realized that I have is personal development. Like I would get so frustrated with myself. Like, um, why am I not doing my power hour? Like I would listen seriously to like five or six hours of like personal development a day because it makes me feel good. And so I'm totally using that as a buffer instead of like going and doing my work that's uncomfortable. I'm listening to personal development that makes me feel good. And it leads to a result of not getting my work done. And then I get annoyed. And so she like told me, you have to pick which negative feeling you're willing to feel. Are you willing to feel the negative feeling that's going to progress you forward? Or are you wanting to feel the negative feeling that's going to keep you stuck? So like I've heard so many times from people that like, it's totally your thoughts that control everything. I didn't really believe it, but you guys, like I'm believing it now because just in the past month and a half of doing this, like I have noticed such a huge difference in my life and in my business. <laughs> so I hope this little model can help you because it's helped me like a ton of just being so aware of your thoughts and the way that they're leading you to feel. And if it's bad, then it's going to lead to a bad action. That's going to be a bad result. So that's that. Yes. No, that's so good. Thank you for sharing that with us because it's seriously so true. And I mean, there's so many times that people say they're doing all the things and not seeing any type of results in any aspect of their life. And you guys, it's literally your thoughts and your confident and how you feel and think about yourself that trickles into every aspect of your life, not just the business, but your relationships and everything. So I think that that's awesome. And I'm sure if you guys have like a certain issue that maybe you need help with message Marty, and maybe she can help like dissect it for you using that model. Um, because you've probably heard it be done to yourself and then also other people when they're, she's doing the coaching stuff. So maybe know a little bit more. Cause sometimes I'm like, Hey, I know I have this thought, but how do I fix it? And you kind of get stuck. Right. But sometimes, sometimes having like a outside perspective yeah. of it can help you figure it out more. It's just these stupid little lies that we tell ourselves that aren't real. I know. And sometimes I think I'm like, did, back in the day, did like our like great, great grandparents have like all these weird thoughts 24 seven, or is it just like a new thing? <laughs> I'm sure they did, but it's just, it's just so weird how, I mean, our brain is amazing, but yeah. we also have so much control over every, so much of our life that it's kind of cool, honestly. Um, yeah, it really is. Well, like, I think it's just funny how we're all so worried about like negative things and failing and everything. And our brain like legit does that for us automatically. And so it's just, I don't know. I just wish everybody could like understand this because it really is life changing. Like if you could just figure out the way you're thinking like everyone's lives would be so different well and I think everybody would treat people better and it go. it's like the big butterfly effect you know if you could mm -hmm. control your thoughts and your things better it's going to trickle into other people in your life too and then right on on from there yeah so okay. I will also I'll add the affirmations into the group so we can do that because I think that's huge and I yes. think like you said find affirmations that work for you like figure out what you're struggling with and find an affirmation that you're going to tell yourself every day. Literally. Yeah. I, I just this week rewrote my affirmations cause I was kind of stuck in reading the same ones from like two years ago. And I'm like, Hey, I need to update this. <laughs> you know, things have, things have changed. I'm struggling with different things now than I was two years ago. So I literally, yeah, this week I updated it and I just have it in my notes on my phone. So I always have it with me. So, and I know people that will, voice message themselves saying their affirmations like if they're in the car driving to work and they just play it and can listen to it there's lots of different ways that you can do it and it literally should take you like five minutes so it shouldn't take you long so and if you guys need help figuring out different affirmations or things you're struggling with feel free to message me or marty or any of us um and we can help you with it because sometimes it's hard like you said to, it's good to have an outside perspective on it 
Um, yeah. Diana just said that we should share yeah. some message thread. So if you guys like have a thought like, Hey, you guys, I'm struggling with this aspect of life or the business or whatever it might be. And then we can give some input of what maybe a good affirmation would be. So if you guys are stumped on that, then do that. So like I challenge you by tomorrow night or by uh, Thursday. So by Thursday, like I want everybody to have some affirmations, like at least 10 affirmations written out that you can read to yourself that can help like get your brain in the right place. So that's totally doable. Figure out 10 that you can have written for yourself by Thursday. So it's like two days. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys need help with it, then let us know. But yeah, I love that. And it's just, it's stuff that like, I feel like we kind of know in the back of our head, like, oh, our thoughts do like control everything we do, but it's the hard part is actually changing your actions and your feelings around it because it's true. Every single thing that we do in life, we do it based on how it's going to make us feel every single thing. So whether we think we're a selfish person or not, we are like you go serve somebody, you do it because it makes you feel good. You know what I mean? So literally everything we do is on how it makes us feel. So right. figure out things, stuff that can make you feel good. And we're all, we all have bad negative self-talk that we need to work on. I guarantee every single one of us does without even realizing it. Um, oh yeah. Before this call started, I was like, yeah, you're oh my gosh, like, what if you like talk, tell them all this and it doesn't make sense at all. Like I was like freaking out a little bit and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> like totally your thought is making you have anxiety right now. <laughs> it's so true. It's so funny. And sometimes like I've done that where I'm like, stop, like I'll talk to myself, like stop thinking that, you know, yeah. like if people were around, they would think I was loony, but <laughs> I don't know. True. Do you guys have any questions about anything um, for Marty or about anything in general? But yeah, get your affirmations set up. If you're interested in her group at all, we learned this with Cozy. <laughs> she only has like a four day window of her Sign up. like allowing people into her group. And it's always towards the end of the month. And her group is $49 a month and you get access to bonus content. Like weight, she does weight loss calls. So she does one of those a month. And then she has a whole content where there's like 15 videos that she teaches you stuff about weight loss, all the mindset part of it. And then she also does, um, she has like 15 videos of um, growing your own business. And she will literally coach you on anything. Like I have heard a lot of different things in these groups and it's just crazy. And then her one-on-one -on -one coaching is $54 for a 30 minute session. And you can do that as many times as you want. Yeah. That's awesome. So one day we'll all go to a, one of her little events that she has. Yes. Her, she's doing one next month in, in Thanksgiving point, I think. And it's sold out. Oh. It sold out so fast. Take it. Darn yeah. it. I know I remember you telling us, but okay. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. to implement it more. I got on her wait list or whatever. So we'll see. But yeah, I think it's, it's, will change your business. If you guys can get ahead of your thoughts and change those. hundred mm -hmm. percent. I get emails still of like joining her group. So when I get one, I'll like post the link in the thread. If any of you guys are interested in oh, yeah, joining do that, when you get so it. yeah, okay, so good. Thank you so much. Thanks for hopping on, you guys. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll get the the sheet for the habit group to to do a to sign up to do a post. I'll do that tomorrow. So, okay, good night and have have a good night. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.